honor to invite Shri Vinay Kumar Singh Ji to render the opening keynote address. Can we all together please welcome him on the day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 
infrastructure where the 50-50 capital investment is being done by the central government and the state governments. Now coming back to some of the details of the project. As I was sharing with you, the way India is growing at much higher speed, the urban population is growing. <coughs> this small graph here that very clearly indicates it. Very soon, we will have a large number of people staying in the urban centers. And this is aspirational also. Everybody wants to stay in an urban center. Even we observe that families which are quite rich in rural setup, but their next generation wants to move to cities. And this is happening as at a very, very fast pace. The moment it happens, there are many challenges of providing infrastructure, providing services, providing housing, so many things in the urban sector. But if we can, to some extent, decentralize the economic activity and create the smaller centers of economic activity, <coughs> all around big metropolitan cities, that decentralization of economic activity will help in controlling the requirement of infrastructure, planning properly, maintaining the environment. So on long term basis, what we say generally the sustainable development. So the effort is to have sustainable development of <coughs> Delhi particularly and NCR in general. We know that within the country we have very good transport systems in terms of FEC at the national level, Indian railways for long term journeys, civil aviation also. We have made good strides in civil aviation. Today, a large number of airports are available and very frequent flights are available to various cities within the country. Metros have come up in large number of cities and very soon we will see metros in almost like 50 cities in the country. The government is working on that program. Within the cities, metros or the local buses or last mile connectivity transport modes, so that is two wheeler, three wheeler bus systems, BRTS. So many things have come up. There was a big gap of intercity commerce. Even within national capital region, if somebody has to travel about 100 kilometers or if somebody is traveling across the state boundaries, the public transport modes are not good. <coughs> in terms of service quality also, if you travel in a uh, state government bus, if you want to travel say from Gazebar to Delhi to Manesar or Gurugram, it may take four to five hours by public transport. Normally what happens in Delhi, because large number of us, we travel by our private vehicles, we measure the time in terms of time taken by private vehicle. We don't think about the arm army, the public at large, who cannot afford a taxi or a car, where the public transport is essential. So, RRTS is a project which is going to fill this gap of intercity travel, safe travel, comfortable travel, high frequency travel, reliable travel. If timetable says that this train will reach in 36 minutes to the your destination, it will take 36 minutes, maybe 37 or 35 maximum, nothing less, nothing more. So, that is the reliability of the system which is being introduced. And commuter railway systems world over have shown that this is the way you can control the boundaries of any city, whether it is a tier 1 city, tier 2 city, or tier 3 city. Otherwise, lack of good transport or lack of public transport, rather lack of good public transport, leads to horizontal development of cities, horizontal sprawl of the cities. 
with that objective and keeping in mind the Honorable Prime Minister's program of Gadi Shakti, we say that whatever we do, whether we are developing infrastructure, whether we are developing transport system, whether we are developing power lines, there has to be integrated planning, integrated execution. So, uh, this particular project completely fits in, in that scheme of things. Where we are filling that gap, we are doing multi-model integration, that is the modes of transport, which I will be talking later on. And by this, we intend to utilize the available capital with the country. All countries have capital, especially we also have and government wants to build out of infrastructure. So how to optimize the investments? PM Gadi Shakti helps us in that. So there are monitoring groups, there are groups which coordinate and we very actively participate in that. We take the advantage of this facility. And we are creating this network of regional rails. If you see on the left hand side, there are three corridors which are being constructed, Delhi Meerut, Delhi Alwar and Delhi Panipat. All three are animated from the center of Delhi, a place called Sarai Malikar, Niyamudin. And all the three corridors are interoperable. The effort is to bring in anything from the center to a 200-120 km within a reach of 60 to 70 minutes. And the First for road which we have taken up is Delhi to Meerut. <coughs> this particular car road is under construction. The second car road we are doing <coughs> construction activities, we are clearing the utilities, we are getting approvals. But first for road, when we are implementing the two very important ingredients we are focusing, that is interoperability and multimodal integration. Interoperability between various corridors. That means a train which is on Delhi Merit corridor can travel seamlessly to other two corridors and vice versa. See, this reduces changeover. Any changeover by a commuter is a penalty. He takes it as a penalty. We may plan five lines, so person changing from this to this to that, and we feel that we have done something good. It is the public which will decide whether we have done good or bad. If they patronize the system, that means we have done the good. So, we are trying to integrate as much as possible with the existing modes of transport. We have some limitation on that because physical infrastructure is available. There are some places, there are constraints of <coughs> sites, something which is not physically possible to construct above or below the same facility. But wherever possible, we are integrating with the national railway stations, with the metro stations. In Delhi, we are integrating with the six, seven lines of Delhi metro at various stations. We are segregating pedestrians from the motorized traffic at each of these locations. That means if there is an underground metro station, we are providing underground pathway. <coughs> Wherever we are elevated and metro is elevated, then we are providing uh, four lower bridges. So that there is a lot of comfort everywhere we are providing food or bridge or subway, we are providing escalators, lifts, so that common man can travel in comfort and the experience is good. So that they can shift from public transport, uh, private transport to public transport. We are linking to airport, we are linking to uh, Indian railway stations, all through the corridor we are linking with uh, our stations are practically the premises of bus stands. So very, very, very close uh, interaction. Now, in terms of technology also, uh, we, we are using technology, we have chosen the technology in a way that technology is future proof. That it doesn't become obsolete. This being a railway system, choice of technology has to be made with various perspectives, especially when we are in a phase 
clear, we are trying to make everything whatever is possible in India. Make in India is a very strong commitment. And I am happy that this kind of system which has a design speed of 180 km per hour, which requires very high frequency trains, and we are looking at safety and comfort also. Still, with all this, almost like 92% content of the project is Indian. All our trains are being manufactured in Saudi Gujarat by a strong India plant. The EDCS level 2 signaling system, which is on LT backbone, which is happening for the first time in the world. And then we are integrating it with the automatic train operation, APO and uh, platform screen goes for the protection of passengers. This formation has never been attempted. And Europe is also looking at us how we do when we commission it. And I am happy to share with you that all our tests which we have done, our trials, these are successful. <coughs> Very soon, within the next two months, we are going to start the passenger operations on Delhi Merit, a part of the Delhi Merit corridor. So, uh, see, I have been given a limited time by the organizers, so keeping that in mind, I am already exceeded probably the my time, which normally we don't do, we do the projects before time. <laughs> but uh, I not get this kind of audience. Frequently, so I think we will take five minutes more. Uh, so few things which we are doing first time in the country is uh, one very important thing which my uh, my friends on railway fraternity know is the track. Track is something which doesn't have any redundancy. Any problem with the track affects the operations. Any problem with the track can affect. So, uh, various experiments have been done. We have tried, uh, I am also from India Railway, so India Railway has tried many things. But what we have brought in, for, in the country for the first time is a pre class lap ride track, which is a European uh, system, Austrian system. We have taken technology from there, but it is being built by the parameters. This is a high performance, low maintenance track. Now we have done trials of 260 km per hour, so we are confident about technology also. The traction. Traction as far as the flexible Boichi is concerned for 180 km per hour, this, this is something common. It has been done many times in the world. But the traction for in the tunnels where we are using rigid catenary, this, this is something new. There are only very few examples of trains being run at 180 km per hour on a rigid technology. So we will be doing it on a Delhi project and other projects also. Then signaling I already shared with you. In fact, uh, we call it EDCS level 2, but actually what we are doing is one step further, that is EDCS uh, level 3 hybrid. And with the train sets being used on our system and all operational vehicles also equipped with ATP. Practically we are in level 3. But that is something technical. I will avoid talking about that here. Rolling stock, yes. Rolling stock is something very interesting. We, we have gone for uh, high performance rolling stock, high speed, very comfortable. Easy to board, deboard because the levels are same as the platform. Now, it is not only the technology we are using for operating the system or running the system, but we use a lot of technology in project execution, project implementation, monitoring. So, uh, I am just sharing some of these. Here, we are one project which is using BIM, Building Information Model, and bottom up. This is being done by our own team, not uh, dependent on a consultant, external consultant who comes and does something and goes out. So it is not against consultants. But what I am saying is that capacity is being built within the organization, which is very, very important for long term sustaining this kind of initiative and creating a model which can be replicated by other organizations. So, uh, common data environment, environment and then building information modeling. I mean, I'll be happy if any one of you is interested, we'll be happy to share with you how.
how we are doing it and being and how it is helping us because it is it itself is a subject where we can discuss for hours together. And then asset management. This is something I would like to talk to you because this is also happening for the first time in the country. Comprehensive asset management system. A railway system which is quite complex and involves a lot of components, a lot of equipments. Uh, for the first time in the country, this is being very comprehensively captured in our asset management system. So trans transition from BIM to asset management system, the data which is available on BIM, how it will be transferred to AMS and how that data and day to day inputs from the system by predictive maintenance and so many other things, IOTs which we are using, how it will be utilized for maintaining and keeping the system at optimum level. So here, the, uh, what I was talking about excellence and innovation, this is the core of what our RTS is doing and how the, the, the whole system will be working. I am giving this commuter features, this we can talk later also when trains will be in operation. But just to mention that uh, we are providing universal access which you see in the metro uh, stations also. Beyond that, we have added one more feature, many times we have seen that a patient or an organ is to be moved at high speed where the grey corridors are created. We are providing a facility to take stretchers all across our system, all stations, all trains. So there is a green corridor available all the time across LCI. I would like to, I think, restrain myself, but uh, we are doing so many other things except uh, mm, I, I would like to mention here to, uh, regarding the privatize, privatizing the ONM. So, two things which we are, we are doing again for the first time in the railway industry in the country is that we have given a long term contract to OEM, that is a stock. The, our uh, rolling stock provider. So, as strong is responsible for maintaining the trains in our depot, their people, our depot, comprehensive contract for 15 years. The second part is that we have outsourced our operation and maintenance of fixed assets to DB, the Dosh Khan, the uh, German operator. They will be running the trains. So, drivers, station managers, everybody will be from DP. And they will be maintaining the signaling assets, the track, the traction, everything. So now between these two people, the DP and a strong, the whole of the system will be maintained, operated. We will be focusing on revenue generation. NCRT is focusing on revenue generation through land value capture, through property development, through new ideas. There are so many things which will unfold in coming years. In the next two years, we are working on them. So, a lot of new thinking, new ideas we are implementing. It was very difficult to take those decisions because the moment you take a decision, this is challenged by and number of people. But NCRTC has done that and I am very, very happy that we are talking of innovation and excellence. And this should be the theme for a large number of such summits, conferences and workshops in the country. So that we strive for that and we don't settle for anything less than excellent. Thank you very much.